everyone. It's Angela Irene with Budget Reload. Thank you so much for being here today. It is time for another Dollar Tree Extreme Food Challenge video where you eat for an entire week, breakfast, lunch, and dinner from food purchased exclusively from Dollar Tree. We're going to start our days off with a choice of cheesy grits and fried eggs or oatmeal with peaches. And for lunch, we have a choice of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or leftovers. And these meals should make quite a bit in the leftover department. Before we talk dinner, I wanted to ask, how are your Dollar Tree shelves? Ours are extremely bare, the freezer section is empty, and I spent about an hour in the store trying to put together a week's worth of food. Is this going to be the most creative menu we've done? No. But the menu is filled with classic dishes, and we're going to eat for $33. And for dinner this week, we'll have baked hot dogs, hearty black bean quesadillas, we'll have that twice, tuna noodle skillet, fried rice and spring rolls, lentil shepherd's pie, and garlicky white bean soup. Now for breakfast, we'll have the choice of the quick oats with peaches or the grits with eggs. We will just make the oats and the grits both according to the directions on the package. We will use the peach halves, that can is a 29 ounce can, to sweeten the oats and then we will buy a dozen eggs and we'll use three of them for a dish later on, but the rest, if someone would like grits and eggs, they certainly can. We will buy two oats, one of the peach, one grit, and one dozen eggs for a total of $5. And lunch is pretty self-explanatory. PB&J sandwiches or leftovers. These meals should make quite a bit in the leftover department. Baked hot dogs are definitely an old time favorite. Back in the day when sandwich bread was your hot dog bun, your hamburger bun, and your garlic bread for spaghetti. These are really easy to put together. You're going to unwrap the cheese, put a slice of cheese on each of the eight pieces of bread. You're going to put one hot dog on the cheese. You're going to fold up the two sides and secure them with the toothpicks. You can see in the picture, I kind of use a fold over method where the toothpicks go through both uh, sides of the bread. If you don't like using the toothpicks, you can certainly make a little strips of tin foil into kind of a like a napkin ring in the middle and kind of like a twist tie kind of action going on there. I spread these out on a foil lined cookie sheet and I bake them at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. I like a little bit of browning but it really depends on how much of a crusty bread you like. Some people like it where it's just really warmed up and some people like it where almost the bread falls apart. It's so crunchy. And you can get super creative with that. Instead of using the sliced cheese, you can certainly use like a shredded cheddar or Swiss. And some people even baste these in a garlic butter. I mean, you really could kick this up if you wanted to. And when the hot dogs are baking, I like to go ahead and warm up one can of beans on the stove. I bought two, but we really only needed one. It's a 19 ounce can. And I like to doctor mine up a little bit. If you have, um, you know, a little anything extra, I have a couple of tablespoons of ketchup, about a teaspoon of regular mustard, um, you know, a little bit of a sprinkling of brown sugar and some onion powder just to change up the flavor a little bit. It's pretty good all on its own but I like more of a campfire kind of taste to it so you know by the time this is on the stove simmering your hot dogs are ready to go and you've got a meal in you know less than 20 minutes and there you have it baked dogs and baked beans and I know the pictures are horrible 
But you know what? There really isn't a, a clean way of taking a picture of this. It is what it is. They're hot dogs. Please be kind in the comments. We're trying to have a family show. No! Oh! to forgive the background noise we've got a lot going on today the first thing I'm going to do in our hearty black bean quesadillas is I took my frozen onion out of that onion and pepper bag and diced it up and you know if, if there's quite a bit of onion in there so I'm gonna say that is enough for um, you know an actual onion if you're using fresh ingredients just dice up a smaller onion and I'm gonna go ahead and just fry these up just a little bit, sweat out some of the moisture, and take a little bit of the bite out. If you've got kids that do not like raw onion, you know what, I wouldn't skip the onion. It's such a great flavor in these, um, but if you saute them just a little bit, it'll take that bite out of them. If you are using the frozen ones here like I am, I would suggest definitely sweating these out at high heat. Look at all the moisture. These ones uh, in this particular bag had quite a bit of moisture in, and we don't want soggy quesadillas, so sweat that that extra water out. Oh, you can hear that sizzling now. It only took a few minutes to get rid of all of that extra moisture. I'm going to put this off to the side and let this cool while I assemble the rest of the dish. This certainly is a quick assembly. We're going to take our rinsed and drained beans our can of rinsed corn and that four ounces of cheese look at how much that makes if you do it on the smallest grate it will spread a lot farther and it'll go a lot farther let me grab the onions get our onions in here And if you wanted to spend a dollar, you could get a packet of the taco seasoning, or you could just use the seasonings you have at home. I'll leave my recipe down below. We're gonna and add all of that goodness and give it a good stir. Here it is, all stirred up. It's looking really good. This will make 10 hearty bean quesadillas. So this will end up being two dinners. We'll do five one dinner and five the next. And then we will serve this with our seasoned rice. All right, I'm gonna fill each one with half of a cup of filling. It looks like the coverage is really nice. I'm gonna put them in a nonstick skillet. Gonna spray it with a little bit of cooking spray on both sides and give them a good toast. These two are almost done. We only have two more to go. Actually, we can make five for each dinner, so if somebody's still a little hungry, or we can cut one up in four pieces and everybody has just a little bit more. I made my seasoned rice in my rice cooker, but you could certainly make it on the stovetop as well. I took our two pound bag of rice and divided it in two. I'm going to use it in two different recipes. I tossed in the rice, the seasonings, the water. In about half an hour, I had seasoned rice for two meals. Hearty black bean quesadillas with seasoned rice. We'll have it two times this week. To start our tuna and noodles. Um, this is going to be a one pot skillet. So, in my deep pot, I've got four cups of boiling water. I'm going to add half of a teaspoon of salt. I've got some onion powder. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of that in. Garlic powder. I'm going to sprinkle a little on the water. I'm going to stir in our entire bag of noodles. I'm going to give this a good stir. I'm 
We're going to put the lid back on and we're going to let this come back up to a boil. All right, looks like it's coming back to a, royal, a rolling boil. Go ahead and give it a stir. Put the lid back on and drop the temp to a very, very low. You know, kind of the lowest you can get it. And we're just gonna simmer these noodles and they're going to soak up all of that water. And we're gonna give it a stir every eh, two to three minutes. After 12 minutes on the low simmer, Look at our noodles, they're nice, they're plumped up. We have a little bit of water left on the bottom, which will help thin out our soup. I'm going to add two cans of cream of mushroom. If you only use one can in your recipe, just go ahead and use one. Uh, since we use this a lot of times for leftovers for lunch, and you know, it really soaks up all of the, you know, the moisture. I like two cans, I like it more on the creamy side. I don't tend to add, you know, much milk. I may add a little bit of water if the noodles are really doing a good job of soaking this up. So we're going to add this. We're going to add two cans of tuna. If your family isn't really strong with tuna, just add one can. One can is just fine. And this time they had albacore, which was nice. It's a little more on the white side, a little less red. I'm gonna go ahead and get all that in and get it combined. All right, that, looks, that is looking good. I have only added the one can of tuna and it has great coverage. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it at one can. Um, but like I said, if you enjoy it, go ahead and add that second can. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on, let this come up to temperature, let it bubble a little bit, and then we'll add the peas. Here, yeah, mixture has started to bubble. Look at that, it's looking great. Now, if you wanted to start this off like a little fancier, if you had onions and garlic, you could have sauteed them in just a teeny bit of olive oil in the very beginning, then added the four cups of water then you know the whatever seasoning you wanted to add I did the salt the onion powder and the garlic powder and then the noodles so it would have given a little more you know a little extra pizzazz I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, about half the can let's see what it looks like some people like peas some people like a mixture a blend of peas and carrots I mean whatever vegetables you like to add asparagus would be really good in here too yeah it's looking a little sparse let's add a little more okay now I called this the tuna noodle skillet now if you wanted to make this a casserole you could easily turn this out into like you know a nine by 13 um, break up some crackers and some butter make a little topping top it with panko or some breadcrumbs you could even add cheese if you wanted to and then bake it at 350 for yeah you know 20 minutes or so make sure everything is all nice and brown and ready to go um, but you know what this is just an easy weekday meal you can have it ready less than half an hour and you're eating all right that is the tuna noodle skillet all ready to go. We're going to start our fried rice by heating up a few tablespoons of oil. I'm just using good old fashioned vegetable oil. We're going to stir the rice in the oil until it's nice and coated and takes on a little bit of color. Now add your pre-cooked vegetables, give that a stir, then add the ham and give that a nice stir. We're going to make a little makeshift teriyaki. We're going to add the chicken bouillon cube that we crushed, a little bit of sugar, and some soy sauce packets. 
I added several of the soy packets and a little more sugar and tasted as I went along. It's easier to add than subtract. When I was happy with the seasoning, I added the eggs. Finished scrambling the eggs, incorporated them into the rest of the rice, and we were ready to eat. I mixed two of the gravy packets according to the directions on the box. I added the vegetable mix that I warmed up in the microwave for four minutes and give it a good stir. And here's where I deviated from the recipe. I added all of the lentils, way too many lentils. Just add half. Save the other half for another recipe. Trust me, I love lentils. But an entire bag, way, way too many. Just use half the bag. Add your lentil mixture to a greased deep dish pie pan or similar size casserole dish. I prepared the potatoes according to the directions on the package and then I spread them carefully on top of our lentil mixture. Bake in a 400 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes until it's bubbly and the potatoes start getting a little brown. This dish is perfect for a fall or a winter day.
soup pairs so well with the garlic toast. If you cut each slice into three strips and then bake it, it gets so much more uh, of a crust onto it and it is nice for dipping in this soup. And here is a quick tip to make this soup stretch even farther. If you're having it for lunch, if you have a can of carrots and a can of potatoes, dice those up nice and fine and put those in the soup, stir it all in, heat it back up. It stretches the soup and it gives it a little different flavor. Well, friends, that was the Dollar Tree Challenge. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner for four people, 84 meals for $33. Thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Thank you for spending time with us. Until next time, eat well, be safe. We'll see you soon.